I turned 18 and um, literally it was a couple of weeks after my birthday. I was having a drink, I threw a plastic bottle out of the window, I hit someone's car, um, I looked out the window and I realised that the man was just swearing. I couldn't speak a word in English, but I understood he was upset. I was under the influence of alcohol, so I went to the kitchen, picked up a knife. Got into his car um, and he was trying to call the police, so I smashed the window, snatched his phone. I tried to stab him a few times uh, when he was sitting in his car and um, I can't really say, I don't remember how I did it, but I just know that he suffered an injury on his shoulder. I was given a custodial sentence of four years. Uh, I served two years, eight months. Prison for me at the age of 18 was quite really hard. The separation from my family, from my parents, it was hard to understand that now I'm wasting my life in here sitting in a cell when I could have been studying, trying to get a job, um, trying to do things that are positive to my life, but clearly because of the choice that I made, now I'm sitting in a cell. Young adults are treated much like adult offenders, but the evidence shows they're different. Recent research has found that they're still maturing, more challenging to manage, and crucially, more likely to reoffend. I went back to prison on a sim for the simple reasons that there was no support. I wanted to change. I really wanted to change. I wanted to get a house, I wanted to get a job, I wanted to get an apprenticeship, I wanted to do something positive. But the reality is that there was nothing there. And on top of it, now you've got a criminal record. So if you turn up to a job interview, the first thing they look at is, do you have a criminal record? Yes, I do. Do you have any qualifications? No, I don't. Do you have any experience? No, I don't. Okay, well, let me give it to somebody else who has those things. People made that assumption, because I'm now older, I should know what to do. And the reality is that I wasn't, I wasn't aware of what I'm doing fully. So I needed support. I needed support in the sense of show me what's right, what's wrong, or maybe not necessarily what's right and what's wrong, but how do I overcome the wrong to turn into a right thing? This is often the first part of the journey for young adult offenders, an overnight stay in a police cell. Now, a group of police officers here in Brixton, South London, have decided this is the crucial time to intervene. They've set up a radical new project to try and stop young adults from reoffending. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Extensive criminal history. Right, okay. Been to prison mm -hmm. quite a few times. The project's called Divert and it's run by Inspector Jack Rowland mm -hmm. and his colleague Anne Marie. They target anyone under the age of 25 who's arrested and brought into custody here. We'll go and speak to him, see if he wants to engage with us. Mm -hmm. If we can sit down with him, we can find out what the, what the story is. Yeah. If he wants to help, I'm sure we can give it to him. The aim? To help them find work when they're released and to stop them reoffending. So we're just going to make our way down to South Seven. A young man called Abdi was brought in last night uh, for possession of cannabis. Abdi, I understand that you don't want to be on the camera and that's absolutely fine. However, not everyone wants their help. Okay, that's fine. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Mohammed. Mohammed. Are you asleep? Okay, yeah. He's asleep or ignoring me. Okay. Am 
Marcus, how are you? You all right? Um, do you remember my name's Anne Marie and I'm coordinating the programme here? Are you still happy to talk? Yeah? Okay. Finally, success. Hi, hon. Come out. Do you remember when you were first arrested? Yeah, that's when we were like 12 or 11. Can you tell me what it was for? It would be my friend Rob's song. It's not fun. And when he got arrested, he pointed out saying it was me. How are you feeling? Then it carried on from there, then put down the knife, picked up a gun. It kept on going from there. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions about you and your interests, what sort of things you like doing, what sort of things you're into. So what are your interests? Are you into football? Are you into anything like that? No, my interest is mainly motorbikes. Motorbikes. You like motorbikes? Art and design. And art and design. Okay. What sort of art and design? What do you like doing? Drawing? Taking pictures? I can draw anything. You can draw anything? Design people's tattoo, design graphics for people and that. So why didn't you become a tattooist? So obviously you like a lot of tattoos. Just I don't know how to get a bike professional. You don't know how to? So is that something you'd be interested in as well? Yeah. Okay. So you just had the consultation with Marcus. How did it go? It went really well. Marcus really opened up. Um, there's lots of potential there. He's got lots of interests that I was tapping into and that I'm going to develop and explore with Marcus later on. And at this stage, how hopeful are you that you can get him a job? I'm 100% positive about that and I'm very hopeful. Where do you think you'd be without the lifeline of this divert opportunity? Probably in the same world again. We head him back to it. That's the best thing I've heard since I've ever been in this so. And to hear her come and do that, that's, that made me feel good. So now I feel like if they do let me out, I've got someone who I can speak to and try and get me into it. Do you think this could be the end of your life with crime? Yeah. If it turns out that. These young adults that want to engage with us, when they engage with us and they say to us they want to change, they have every chance as, of anybody else. You know, we, we have young people that we arrest that, that can be brought in for drug dealing. And if they want to engage with us, they've got a lot of transferable skills. Drug dealers know risk, they know business strategy, and they know how to sell things. And when you tell them that, when you say that the, 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 the line you're going down is wrong, but the skills you have are right to be used in business and to be used in other elements, they start understanding that. And you knew you could have had a solicitor for the interview, you didn't have one, but now you can have one at any time. The approach is unique. There currently aren't any national programmes to deal with young adult offenders, meaning it's up to local services to take initiative. OK. All right, mate, no worries. But some say this has to change. When you turn 18, that's pretty much it. Unless you're a serial offender, there's not much else that is there for young people that make those mistakes in the first, second time. And what is your response to that? Something needs to be done. Though we've only been going for six months, what it's really proved to me is that this works and that this can fit anywhere else within the country. I'm Danny, I'm 25, I've been arrested more than 50 times and I've got 18 convictions. Why have you been arrested so many times? Because crime's all I've known for a good over 10 years. It's all I've known, if I'm honest. I have had jobs, but they've never lasted. I've worked up to a month and lost jobs through to drug abuse, cannabis, all of that sort of stuff. And, I, yeah, I don't know. I haven't got an exact answer for it, if I'm honest. Why hasn't there been a shift? I mean, why do you think you're still getting arrested? Because I feel like once you're in the system, you're stuck. 
That's my personal opinion. I feel like once you've, maybe once or twice as a kid would have been swept away. But where I got arrested so many times and was in and out of court so much, now if I got arrested for spitting on the floor, I reckon I'd be straight in court. Whereas, whereas if you or somebody else that hasn't been arrested so much, then you get a bit of leniency. It's not where I just feel like it doesn't matter what I do, I'm stuck in that life kind of. It's like a circle I can't get out of. Within, I think, two days of being out of there, they've constantly been ringing my phone and trying to get me to come and see them and that, so it does seem like they're trying to help me, if I'm honest. And has that ever happened to you before? No. Really? I've had, I have had uh, help offered to me most of the times, but it's always been to do with drugs and drink. And do you need to stop taking drugs? Do you want help with your drink? And I've always just said no, to be honest. But for some reason, something about these lot made me feel like they was trying to help. They've got me a job interview for a demolition job. Yeah, and they're saying if it goes through like well, then they, it could take me around the world and all that sort of stuff. So fingers crossed that it will work. And how do you respond to, to the prospects of getting a job that could take you all around the world? It's quite enlightening. It makes me feel happy, to be honest with you.